Okay, welcome everybody. Our next speaker is uh, from Germany. Yeah, he used to be a, a staff researcher at uh, Berkeley, where he did uh, research in, uh, in InfoSec, and at the same time implementing all sorts of solutions, testing them, and, and seeing them take off in the world. Um, one of the things he developed and, uh, is, is Zeek, a program that, uh, that analyzes uh, network traffic. Um, he decided to, uh, to, to co-found his own company that uh, implements Zeek, and one of the things that Zeek does is, is, is well, uh, analyze and dissect uh, network traffic. And he's now going to tell us about Spicy, which um, designs exactly those, uh, those patterns. Um, I give uh, the word to uh, Robin Zommer. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, yeah, so, the, so, so Spicy is, is essentially a new open source project part of the, the Zeek ecosystem. So Zeek is, is uh, this, this network in, in perfect monitoring, network security monitor. Um, we have been leading the development uh, team for uh, a number of years, but now originally was created uh, in Berkeley by, by Vern Paxson. Um, the previous talk in this room talked about a hardware description language. Spicy is essentially a protocol description language. And just as the hardware description language gets compiled down into something that you can map to hardware, um, Spicy, the protocol description language, gets compiled into code that executes to look at network traffic. And I'm going to talk more about that. Um, let me actually ask, who knows Zeek? Formerly Bro, for those who have been around for a while. See, two hands. Okay, so it's an, it's an open source network security monitor. Again, um, it, it has, the first line of code has been written by Vern uh, in 1995. So this has been around for a while, um, quite a while. <laughs> um, however, it has um, gained more traction more recently. And that is um, um, interesting to note because it, it takes a bit of a different approach uh, compared to other uh, systems in that space. So you might, maybe you know, Snort or sorry, Carter, so that is the same space, um, um, but different approach. So they are look mostly for patterns in network streams and, and give you an alert once, once they find something. Zeek is essentially a, a platform for doing, um, to do programming in an analysis task, and, and I'll show you more about this. Just to kind of for, um, for calibration. So Zeek, as I said, it got pretty popular recently, and, and, and you see a, um, a selection of organizations that in one way or, or the other are running Zeek these days in operation. Um, just to be clear, this is, these are not Colite customers. Um, these are um, organizations that in some form have publicized their, their use of, of Zeek um, through uh, talks at conferences maybe, or sometimes they have been uh, posting job postings um, seeking Zeek capabilities. Um, so I, I said Zeek has been around for a while. So what's, what's interesting is that, that Zeek has kind of um, really benefited from a shift in attitude among defenders, uh, incident responders, people in charge of protecting uh, networks, enterprises, um, in the sense that there's this notion of threat hunting has emerged more recently. Right? And, and if, you, if you think about that back about maybe 10 years or so, so you would often see vendors um, that would try to sell you solutions essentially as black boxes, right? And they, they like the, the classic ideas, the intrusion detection system. is something where, I don't know, the vendor would come and say, put it on the network, we, and we make sure you're secure. We will we, we, we protect you. And it turns out, um, as I'm sure many of you have uh, noticed as well, this, this stuff usually doesn't work as advertised. I mean, they might find some stuff, but the interesting stuff they usually miss. And, and that, is, that is almost a, that's the fundamental challenge, because to find attacks, in some sense, you need to, need to know what you're looking for. But that means anticipating the attack. So if there's a new attack out there, you can't find it, not a, in an automated fashion. So, and, and this is why like the, um, what people have called the modern cybersecurity stack has more shifted towards like, data-centric analysis, where you, as the defender of your network, you take charge of um, 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 really digging into what's going on in your, into, in your network and, 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 and correlating all the context and knowledge that you have about what should be there and what shouldn't be there and what might look like weird and, 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 and surprising, you, you put that into the decision and, and you have data that, that kind of backs it up and they can trace down, like, for example, what happened last week when we got compromised. I mean, how did that attacker go in? Um, and this kind of data, that is something that Zeek provides. And this is really um, um, where it kind of found its niche originally in providing you with visibility into networks that, that you couldn't get in other ways. Um, 
the way it works is you, you put it essentially at, um, into your network at some central point that is often the, the border gateway where all the packets are, are flowing by, and you tap into the network stream and, and you get a copy of the packets over to Zeek, just in the way you would uh, deploy a Snort or Zeekata, and, and Zeek starts analyzing them. And what Zeek, first of all, does, it produces a, a stream of log files that shows you like the, the, the activity in your network at a, at a very detailed level, in a com uh, completely policy-neutral way as well, so without judgment. So first, what is going on? And just to show you some examples, um, one log that's coming out of Zeek is, is the connection.log, which essentially, um, these are all in, in, in tab-separated format, so easily parsable, um, gives you a bunch of columns, here rows, um, with, these, with these features. So you see, okay, for every, for every connection that, that, that passed your, uh, your tapping point, what were the IP addresses, the, the, the size of the connection, um, the time step, right? And, and it's um, maybe a, little, a bit of a better net flow in, the, in some sense, this, this connection would look. At the same time, um, Zeek has a bunch of further protocol parsers, protocol decoders, the sectors in, 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 in Wireshark speak, um, where it really kind of understands the protocol and then gets the interesting features out of that protocol conversation. For example, for HTTP sessions, it gives you stuff like, stuff like this. Again, the, uh, the IP addresses, but also um, the URI that was requested, right? And um, the, the user agent. Um, what is the, the, the type of the content that was actually re, um, transferred? Um, what did the, the server respond with? 200 is the, the case status code in HTTP. So for every HTTP request on the wire, you get one log entry like this. And, and suddenly you, have, you see what, what all these endpoints speaking HTTP in various ways do on your network. One more example, SSL. Um, so uh, Zeek has a, an SSL parser. SSL is, well, encrypted. So how much stuff can you get out of it? Well, it turns out a lot. <laughs> so you don't get actually the payload like, the, like what's running over uh, SSL, but at least for most SSL TL TLS versions so far, you get an amazing amount of information out of the, the protocol handshake. And, and you see uh, an excerpt here. Um, you see which ciphers have been used. You see like the, the, the server name, that is the, um, what SSL sends over to a virtual service to know which uh, t uh, server to talk against. You get the certificate. Um, Z can validate certificates on the fly to see if they, they check out against the, the root store. So you get a lot of information um, about your SSL traffic as well. Um, just quick, so, so the basic architecture of Zeek is this, this two-layered two design here. And, and one is the event engine. That is essentially um, the part where all the, hype, uh, the, the performance critical pieces happen. And that is mostly protocol parsing. So basically, these two, three logs that I was showing you, this is coming out of parsing those underlying protocols, and then that is happening in the event engine. And then there's, on top of that, there's um, a scripting language. Uh, and this is why, why Zeek really is more of a platform than, than um, a finalized tool, because at that point, you can put in your own scripts. It's like a domain-specific Python, kind of. You put in your own scripts based on what the protocol parsing is distilling out of the traffic. So essentially based on these features um, that you are saw, saw seeing in the logs. And then you can, on top of that, with this language, you can implement all kinds of applications and, and do whatever kind of analysis you, you want to do. And I showed you the, the network logs that come by default, and there's a bunch of other stuff you can do. I want to focus on, on, this, on this part. This is the, the mainly the, the protocol parsing. Um, and for that, just a bit more detail on, on how this actually works. So I said there's a, there's a stream of packets going over the wire, right? And, and, and Zeke is seeing the stream. So to really understand what's going on there, um, in this case, it's for, a, for an HTTP request from a client, just slash index HTML, and the, the server rep responds with an OK. Um, you get this stream here, and Zeek starts kind of going from, from left to right. And for example, for, for TCP, it sees the SYN packets, and then it knows, OK, once I've seen the, the handshake completed, um, I can send a connection established event up into that scripting language. So there's this event stream coming out of the event engine that you can write then scripts on to operate. Um, the next thing it does basically after this, this low-level TCP analysis is um, putting the TCP stream in order for this session because TCP is a, is a stream-based protocol. So it's, it's, it removes the packet boundaries. And now you have kind of the raw um, HTTP payload here, and now it's the time where the HTTP parser comes in and, and can kind of start parsing this through, and it gets, okay, there's the, there's the URL, or the path at least, there's the version, it's a GET request, and, and this is um, passed on into, into script land then for stuff 
um, to react to. Same for the responder side, um, being passed turns into events, and finally, at the end, there are the fins. That's the final handshake for TCP. You get the connection um, finished event. So this is kind of the, the quick version of low-level Zeek. Um, the thing is, this parsing of protocols, looking at these bytes, like if you have this get index HTML, that is a really task to implement as a programmer. So if you are the one working on the Zeek code, the Zoricada code, the Snort code, um, and your task is adding this new protocol to your, your, your software, um, you probably <laughs> won't enjoy that task. And, and the reason is that it, it's really hard in three different ways. And one is it must be really robust. Basically, you're, you're working on untrusted data. I mean, this is data that's coming in over the network, and you can't rely on um, the, 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 the conversation in there really following the RFC. Um, I mean, there are lots of buggy implementations out there. Um, there are also attackers out there who may actively try to mislead you and crash your system. So they might be crafting packets in a way um, to exactly exploit that one thing that your parser doesn't handle. Um, at the same time, it must be really efficient. So if you, if you think about large networks, um, if, if Zeek is running like in a, in a, I don't know, large university network, you might see hundreds of thousands of connections at the, at the same time. So it needs to parse them all in parallel. And that means, essentially, it can never really buffer anything. It kind of needs to like, multiplex between all those streams, always pass as much as it can as the packet comes in, and then kind of, I don't know, put aside the state, switch to the next connection, pass the packet there, come back to the prior one. So it's just this very incremental, highly concurrent parsing that in a traditional language is really hard to implement. In, in, in C or C++, this is, this is not fun. And then just some protocols are really complex. I mean, you, and, and if you don't cover the full protocol specification with your parser, that's a blind spot. So maybe that's how that attacker comes in next time, or that is the, the key activity you're missing to re reconstruct that, that incident. Um, given that, not surprisingly, there's actually vulnerabilities in this space, uh, like, <laughs> a lot. <laughs> so this is, uh, is a bit of an older analysis, but if you're looking at Wireshark over the years, um, CVEs that, that were published, um, and the, the critical ones in there um, are mostly in parsing code. Zeek isn't any better. <laughs> so this is for, for the previous series, so we're currently at, at version 4, but this is for the, for the 3 series of Zeek, where we, over uh, about a year, we pushed out 11 maintenance updates, um, fixing critical issues. Many of them, 8 of these 11 updates, had issues in the parsers, essentially. Not all of them super critical, but, but a bunch were. And, and, and this is just um, um, ah, something hard to get right. Actually, just um, a couple weeks ago, we had um, a buffer overflow in Zeek in the FTP parser. That's one of the earliest parser ever added to Zeek. So out of the 90s, I guess, <laughs> there were still buffer overflows in there. So it's, it's, it's uh, demonstrating what's, what's going on. Okay, so we want to improve this. Um, maybe, maybe just real quickly, I, I want to show you a bit of code, how this, uh, how this code normally looks like. Even TCP dump has protocol parsers in there. So when you see, I'm, I'm using, if you look at the upper right, TFDP as my example. That is probably the, the most trivial file transfer protocol ever. It's actually called like that, trivial file transfer protocol. Um, and it has this really simple structure for essentially a GET request. So if you want to request a file from a TFDP server, um, this is the packet structure on UDP. Opcode is get, you get the file name, and you say it's, uh, it's, it's zero terminated, and you say if it's um, uh, binary or, or text. And this is, I mean, it's kind of a legacy protocol. It's actually being used often for like bootstrapping thin clients and stuff or network gear. It's, it's about as easy as a protocol gets. So if I look at uh, TCP dump, this is the code to parse essentially a get request in TFTP. Um, it's C code, you see um, pointers in there, you see manual error checking in there, and uh, if you look at the whole TFTP parser, it's, it's 200 lines of code in C, just for the TF, for basically, I think TFTP has five different uh, commands. Wireshark, same, same TFTP transfer um, in Wireshark. This is the code for uh, parsing that request in Wireshark. It's again C, it's again um, um, manual offset computation, it uses some helper, helper uh, libraries. Um, it's, it's, it's low level, it's, it's hard to even 
read it and understand what's going on. Again, keep in mind that simple packet structure. 990 lines of C code in Wireshark for parsing TFTP. Finally, Zeek actually by default doesn't have a TFTP analyzer, so I'm taking the FTP analyzer, the one with the buffer overflow a uh, couple of weeks ago. This is the FTP log file coming out of Zeek. Um, this is roughly the code in Zeek for parsing um, a get or retrieve command in, in FTP. Um, it's C++, a little bit better, but you still you see manual memory management, you see pointers, you see manual error checking. It's, it's really the kind of stuff that um, uh, 335 lines of code in Zeek, C++. It's the kind of stuff where C and C++ is kind of about the worst language you can, can write this in, honestly. Okay, so I already mentioned these other systems. So the thing is that all these, these systems um, kind of are re-implementing this kind of functionality over and over again. Um, and that means, first, there's a lot of redundancy in terms of work being done twice, um, but there's also more opportunity for actually getting stuff wrong. So um, there has been an effort at various systems to kind of find ways out. So And um, Wireshark, for example, has added like a Lua interface. You can now write parsers in Lua. Um, Soikada has added a Rust interface. You can write parsers in, in Rust. Um, this is great because it takes care essentially of the safety aspect. So, you know, in a, in a safe environment at least. It doesn't really help with like all that low level code. Um, that I was showing you, because it's very still imperative, and you need to just kind of go through all the possible cases yourself. It's interesting to look at another domain, um, and that is um, actually several other domains, but in particular, particularly um, programming languages. Um, they are approaching this, this problem completely different. They have parser generators. Um, so Lex and Yuck might be, is, are the classic ones. Python, you might have heard of those. Um, Antla is another one. And th what they do is they... Um, they describe what they want to pass in a declarative fashion. So they, they, they specify a grammar. So this is if you want to pass just an expression, like a binary expression. Expression on the left side, operator expression on the right side. And, and, and you give like this grammar to Yak, for example, and Yak generates C code for you that later passes that program that, that you really want to, want to understand. You don't need to write that parser for that program yourself. Um, between these parentheses here on the right-hand side, there's kind of the semantic of what's, what's supposed to happen when you pass these. Right? So if, if we have an addition, we want to execute an addition. This is C code, a pseudo C code uh, that, that Yak uses. Um, this is like a very common approach in, in programming languages. Unfortunately, these parsers aren't really suitable for protocols. And the reason is um, they don't really support this, this highly concurrent, highly incremental uh, processing style that was, I was mentioning at the beginning. Um, and they also really have no support for the domain we are in, um, like this byte ordering, right? If you have a binary protocol, I mean, maybe you need to flip bytes to get the right value. Um, error recovery, um, all kinds of stuff that um, I'm, I'm going to I'm show you a few more examples later um, that really make it easier to write these protocols and, and not have to write this low-level code that, we, that I showed you for, for, for Wireshark and, 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 and sorry, Carter and Zeek. Um, so therefore, these don't quite work. However, uh, in 2006, we actually uh, um, developed a kind of a first attempt at solving this problem for Zeek, and that is a system called BinPack, and it's essentially a yak for protocol parsers. And it's exactly the same approach. You give it a grammar. This is the example of an, of an SSL handshake. And BinPack generates, in this case, C++ code for you that then Zeek can use to do the parsing of, in this case, the SSL handshake. Winpack is um, the approach how new parsers in Zeek are written these days. So it's, it's part of the distribution, and pretty much since this is out, people have started writing parsers using Winpack. Um, it, however, only solves the problem like halfway, I would say. So, and, and the thing is that it, it really focuses on, on syntax, that is this, this grammar part, but it doesn't allow you to specify what's supposed to happen once you have that passed. Um, like the, what, what in the Yak example was the, in the parentheses, where you still have C code. With BinPack, you still have C++ code there. So you need to write C++ code still to add a new protocol to Zeek, and there's plenty of opportunity still to get that wrong. So you get like vulnerabilities in that code too. Um, it also has a bunch of technical limitations that it's really only really suitable for, for normal application protocols. You can't like pass lower layers, you can't pass files with it. And it still has a, like, uh, a pretty strong lack 
for a lot of niceties that you would really like to have for parsing protocols. And again, like for example, error recovery. What happens if you, if, if, if you get out of sync with your input stream? There's a, there's a broken HTTP request in there, but you would like to continue with the next. This is something like Binpack uh, can't support, and, and, and if you write manually write this code, it's almost impossible to support too, at least in a systematic fashion. All right, that was the long-winded introduction to the new project, and that is called Spicy. Um, and that is essentially the, the bottom line. It's, it's a high-level language for high-level scripting language for writing robust and efficient protocol parsers. And the first one is, is the most important one. It, it has a declar declarative syntax similar to Binpack, um, but it's completely self-contained. So you don't need any C++ more anymore to write to add a new protocol to Zeek using Spicy. It's it's a full language. So what's it, essentially what's in this parenthesis. It's now, it's now a scripting language as well. You're still in your safe environment. You still have access to everything that, that you have been passed. It does have a bunch of support for, for domain-specific stuff, um, specific bytes, like IP types is a built-in type. Uh, byte ordering, you can layer protocols on top of each other and kind of do the typical networking, unwrapping across, um, across layers and, and stacking them. You can put stuff into order, like this, what I showed you with the TCP stream, that you get the, the packets in order and remove the byte boundaries that's built in, uh, error recoveries in there. And it really is, is built to kind of facilitate reuse and composition. So if you have a, a parser for, for one protocol, um, um, and you, you need that later in a different context. ASN1, for example, like a certain encoding, right? And which is used by a bunch of protocols. You, you write the ASN1 parser once, and then suddenly you can use it in all your other spicy parsers. Um, and the last one here, even though we are developing this for Zeek, um, it's actually uh, independent of any specific host application. And I have this kind of secret hope <laughs> that maybe this is something other projects might be interested in as well to pick up and, and, and see if um, that makes sense for them because then there could be a community developing around these puzzles so that different systems can share puzzles and not everybody needs to write them from scratch every single time. Um, yeah, let's make, let me go back to my, my TFTP example. Most trivial protocol, I guess. This is the spicy code. This is spicy. Um, and uh, it's a read request, so it has, again, this declarative structure here, um, these three fields. It says, okay, the, the file name needs to, be, needs to be terminated by a null byte mode, the same. Um, and then Spicy will, at runtime, kind of start passing through. In some sense, this is maybe the, most, uh, the conceptually most interesting part, because this print statement, so what it means is, whenever we are done parsing a read request, this code down there, will execute, and this is, a, in this case, it's a trivial print statement, but this is spicy code. So you can actually, that's what, what, what I meant earlier, you can do stuff here. Um, yeah, I'll actually, I was uh, wondering, I do have a, oh, I'll just continue. So, so let me give you an example. Um, so I have extracted the um, the payload of a TFTP read request packet and put it into a file. Spicy comes with a, with a command line application. This is completely without Zeek at the moment. Spicy comes with an, a, a, a command line application that takes this code and just in time compiles it into executable code that then reads from standard in and parses what is being piped. If I run this through, I get this output, and this is indeed this print statement. So basically, um, we just created a parser for, for TFTP, and we are seeing it working. So what happens here in the background, Spicy Driver is, is kind of a simple front-end tool, um, is that Spicy in the background compiles the specification into C++ code, and then spawns a C++ compiler to turn, to to turn it into executable code, and then Spicy Driver all the way goes all the way, then kind of loads that back in, uh, as a shared library, essentially, starts the code, reads from standard in, feeds the data into, into the parser. It doesn't need to be that way. You can also pre-compile, so you don't need it just in time. You can basically just generate the C++ code, integrate it into your normal build system, um, or uh, several other ways to use this. But we wrote essentially parser without any C++ code here. TFTP, this is the full TFTP protocol. Um, as I said, it's, it's, my, it's, it's not only the, the read request, it's one, two, three, five uh, opcodes that we have. So we have five different messages. Um, 
the request structure is shared between um, read and write requests. And this is spicy code for passing all of TFT, uh, TFTP. We had 35 lines of code here, compared to the, to the earlier uh, Wireshark TCP dump seek versions. We have a slightly different tool, Spicy Dump, <laughs> nicely named Spicy Dump, um, which kind of gives you a, a JSON representation of what's being passed. So I'm, I'm taking this full grammar now, piping in my same payload from the, from the read request, and it just kind of dumps all the fields as, as, as it passed them. So that also shows that programmatically you have access to the, to the fields being passed. So if the host application, Zeek for example, um, wants to do something with that, this, this information is readily available after passing. So let's talk about Zeek here. Um, so for Zeek, um, Zeek has a plugin API, which is pretty powerful. So we were able to add spicy support to Zeek as a pure external plugin. So if, um, if somebody's already running Zeek, they can just kind of compile the plugin in addition, uh, load it into Zeek at runtime, and Zeek will understand spicy parsers. Um, the way that works is, well, the, the .spicy files, the stuff we have been looking at, um, get loaded by the plugin, and either in this just-in-time fashion, or you can pre-compile them, that speeds it up, basically puts a shared library with an executable code on disk, and you can load it in. We need one more thing uh, for, for Zeek, and that is we need to kind of tell Zeek, okay, once you've passed something, what do you want to do with it? Or what are you supposed to do with it? And um, I'll show an example of that in a, in a second. And then, basically, in addition, um, every parser in Zeek uh, tends to come with some standard scripts. For example, this logging that I showed you at the beginning for HTTP, FTP. Um, the structure of these logs are determined by Zeek scripts. Nothing about that is hard-coded in Zeek. So it's just another Zeek script into lo loaded into that interpreter that determines what's being logged. So for any parser that we would write uh, using spicy, um, we would write a similar Zeek script that now, for example, creates a new log, TFTP log. So let's look at uh, TFTP integration into uh, Zeek then. So this is the same code as before, just a TFTP analyzer. Um, this is the one additional piece, the EVT files, EVT as in events. And, and the thing is that we need to tell Zeek a little bit more about this analyzer that we are just adding. Um, the one thing is we need to tell Zeek when to actually use it. And that is at the beginning, the, the first three lines. Um, it says, okay, so we, we, we are creating a new analyzer. It's kind of the separate specification file, like a little glue file. Um, we are creating a new analyzer called spicy TFTP. It's running on top of UDP so that Zeek knows where to plug it in. Um, we want to pass it with like this, this first type up there, packet, and we want to activate it whenever there's um, UDP traffic on port 69. That is the TFTP code, uh, TFTP port. First part, and the second part is that I was talking about events earlier, and in my, my, my one of the slides I showed you these HTTP events being created out of parsing and sent upstream. Um, we need to tell Zeek basically, okay, when do we want events so that the scripting language gets something to, to operate on. And in this case, what we do is, okay, whenever there's a TFTP request, there is a read request. If you, if you look carefully, there's a, there's a Boolean on the other side. Um, it's read, and is there? Oh yeah, it's, <laughs> it's up here. Um, then we want to generate this event there. Actually, I think it's cut off a little bit. There's an underscore between read and request. Um, so that this basically means, okay, whenever we are done passing a request unit, generate this event and, and put in the following arguments for script land so that people can write their scripts. I can take these uh, two things, TFTP, SPICY-T, FTP, EVT, pre-compile it, this is the, the ahead of time compilation, pre-compile it into a shared library, TFTP, HLTO. I have an additional Zeek script. Remember from the previous slide, we need to, I don't know, we want to see something. I'm, I'm, I didn't put a full script for logging in there, but I'm just doing a, whenever you get the read request event in Zeek, just print something out. So this is Zeek script code. And I can now load this into Zeek with a pcap file that has this read request, and Zeek will execute this event. We'll, okay, all the way, we'll go th through the, the pcap, um, reach something on port 69, activate the uh, new analyzer, feed the data, the payload into the new analyzer, pass through, reach the end of request eventually, generate an event, uh, event executes in script land, and the print statement gets printed. This is, I mean, in some sense, it's, it's very technical and low level. At the same time, we just added the support for a new protocol to Zeek. 
and, and this is without any C++ code. This is without like rebuilding Zeek or anything. It's, it's, it's just basically, in some sense, it becomes a, a second scripting language for Zeek this way. I mean, you as the user, if you're so inclined and you have your, 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 your particular protocol you would like to see support for, this is suddenly in reach for many people, um, writing a grammar in spicy like that, um, even for, for some of the more obscure protocols. And suddenly you can extend Zeek. Um, I wanted to show you a little bit, ba basically I showed you like the most simple spicy code so far possible. Um, um, this is like an excerpt from the act from an actual HTTP parser in spicy. And I just wanted to show you like, like two things. Um, this is just a header, an HTTP header. So just this one line, header name, colon, content, uh, like user agent, right? And you see that basically this is the way here, up here, how you can pass name, the name of the header and the content separated by white space. These are regular expressions. And you see the type of this name is, is this regular expression from up here, and the header value is this regular expression here. This is the way how you pass text-based protocols in, in SPICY. Um, I, so far, TFTP is a binary protocol, which often is easier to wrap your head around because it's, it's like field, 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 field. Text protocols are much more flexible, like they're separated by, by line feeds, and then, I don't know, you have different variations often um, down the line. Um, SPICY is, is applicable to both. And, and, and this, is, this is how often using regular expressions and finding like the, the tokens and, and, and the separators and stuff. Um, if this is too low level, I mean, it's, it's, it doesn't really matter. I just wanted to, to show this. And this is the second part I wanted to show is like between these braces here and down there, suddenly we have much more code. And this is where, where spicy gets really interesting because again, this is all spicy language. So this is not some other external language. This is, this is part of the language itself. And, and you often, hmm? It's not Python, it's spicy. <laughs> it has similarities, uh, not by coincidence, um, but, but yes, it's its own language. Um, oops. <laughs> um, the thing is, this, this might look like, like very, I don't know, extensive, low level, detailed, but, but the, the thing is, if you pass protocols, um, you end up often with lots of special cases that in the end you can't really capture in a pure grammar. So you need to remember state. That is the most important thing. So as you pass something up there, you might need to remember something that you need down there in a, in a completely different part of the protocol, like a MIME type, right, for HTTP. And, and in Spicy, you can express that. So here we look at all the headers. And, and whenever we find a header that's interesting, we remember this, this information. Um, and you, you, you're not seeing what the message actually is because it's an excerpt. But basically, it has a field for content length. And, 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 and this is how you, how you write this. And this is um, different from some other parser generators for, for binary formats in particular, where you're kind of tied to a certain structure. In Spicy, you can, at the end of the day, you can always program your way around any kind of uh, uh, constraint that your protocol gives you, um, which protocols are sometimes, particularly the, the more obscure protocols have sometimes very weird things in there, switching byte order in the middle of something. <laughs> so, so in the end, Spicy, because it's a full language, um, it's Turing complete, you can, you can um, usually find a way to express it. Okay, so more, fe more features that I don't really have the time to go into. Um, Spicy has, has, has actually pretty a complex parser built in where you can kind of look ahead a little bit and decide based on what is the next symbol, like which way you want to go down. That's often helpful for text protocols. You can pre-process input before it goes into a Spicy parser. For example, if it's gzipped, so you want to decompress it first. Spicy comes with a library of, 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 of stuff that you can kind of chain before chain in before your parser sees anything. So suddenly if you're, for example, if in HTTP, you see that the, the, the body of your message is compressed, you can tell Spicy, okay, before you pass that body with the next unit, please decompress. And, and you can write your own filters if you have some encoding that, that you would like to strip. Um, you can like dynamically stack protocols. So sometimes only information from one protocol shows you what's, what's up next in the stack. And, and, and you can kind of, at runtime, instantiate essentially the next, the next layer. Um, this also works for, haven't really talked about this, for files. So file, um, Spicy can also can not only pass protocols, but also file formats, because conceptually that's not really different. If you have, I don't know, a PNG file or some, some zip archive, that itself is a binary thing to pass. And those things fly over the network. So if you do an HTTP download of, say, um, a PNG file, um, Zeek has already the mechanism in there 
to pipe that file into its internal file analysis framework so that you can actually inspect the PNG file and, and get metadata out there, right? Or um, exif, informa exif information, for example. And you see, suddenly see where the photo was taken or, 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 or um, what device took it. So, and, and Spicy supports that as well. So you can actually instantiate the file parser, um, for example, inside the HTTP parser once you know what, what, what type it is. So it has this, this, this stacking that can reassemble. I mentioned that it can store state across um, like both directions of a, of a, of a uh, connection. And, and this one is a, is a biggie, which we actually just recently added to Spicy. It's, it's, it's the, the error recovery I mentioned earlier, where if something goes wrong, in a protocol passing, always something, something goes always wrong. I mean, very often it's just you, you hit some part of the input stream that, that, I don't know, where the RFC is not followed, where, where suddenly there's a message type that some vendor added to some protocol and, and, and it's not standardized anywhere, so your parser doesn't have it. So you keep running into stuff that, that you wouldn't expect. Spicy can deal with that robustly, abort, and, and kind of figure out where to continue later in the stream. And that is something really hard to, to program manually. Um, yeah, so I don't want to go more, so basically it's, it's the, um, there's a lot of stuff behind this um, that, that I could show, but I don't have the time. I wanted to show you that we have actually um, written a bunch of spicy analyzers at this point. Um, I actually, some, we wrote some as the, as the Zeek team, uh, also other people in the community wrote some as well. And this is um, what's currently available, Zeek has a package manager, uh, like PyPy for Python, um, or I don't know, uh, CPAN for Perl. I guess um, so we have ZKG, the Zeek Package Manager. And you can, because I showed you um, how you basically these, these parsers get compiled dynamically without any changes at Zeek. That means you can put a parser into a Zeek package and you can use our package manager. First, you need the Spicy plugin um, to, uh, to the interfacing to Spicy, and then you can just install um, support for a new protocol through the package manager. So once you do ZKG install spicy TFTP, suddenly your Zeek has a new protocol analyzer. It pulls it down from GitHub, compiles it in the background, and, and Zeek has a new protocol. And these are, it's just a selection of stuff we, we built um, at this point. And you see, for example, some file analyzers in here. There's spicy PE, that's uh, uh, the portable executable, I guess. Oh, yeah, portable executable, Windows, Windows executable file format, essentially. Some interesting pieces of information in there. Um, the most recent news is that Spicy, so Spicy has been kind of out in prototypes for a while. By, by now, we kind of uh, re-implemented for a production version. People have been using this for, for I don't know, a year, year and a half. Um, we will merge it into the next re uh, Zeek release that will be coming out in a couple of months. Um, from that point on, it will be part of Zeek um, so that you don't need to install that plugin anymore. Um, it will just kind of be built in. And that means everybody can immediately start adding new analyzers without any, any hurdle in getting like, the, the stuff compiled and, 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 and downloaded and, and, and stuff. If you're interested in more, there's the link to the documentation. There's, a, there's a, in particular um, a tutorial in there. Actually, the screenshot is old. This is not missing anymore. <laughs> I should update the screenshot. Um, and you see like that it starts with an example of, of HTTP. Um, you can dig in there. There's uh, both about a lot of what spicy the language, about the Zeek integration is in there. And um, if the code is on GitHub, of course, it's just like Zeek, it's BSD licensed, um, so completely open. Um, we have a, on the Zeek Slack, if you are interested in joining the Zeek community, there's a, a spicy channel for all your questions. Um, there's also an older paper, which is conceptually still right, so an academic paper, it's conceptually still right, the, the specifics of the language have changed at this point. Um, yeah, that was it. Maybe I should, the final thing I wanted to say, if you guys are, if anybody here happens to be interested in this domain, call out our, our company uh, is hiring. So we have, I think, I don't know, 35 positions open or more across all disciplines at the moment. So in case anybody <laughs> feels like for some new, like some new challenge, um, look at that link. And that was my talk. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? Anywhere. Yeah. Uh, you used the enumeration in the, uh, the example where you showed the different protocol elements. Yeah. Um, but you didn't specify a type there. Whereas in the original specification, you had UN16. Yeah, Was it one. here? I think. Because opcode is defined as an enum. Yep. 
and in the previous slide, opcode was defined as a UN16. Uh, one more. One mm -hmm. more. Here. Here. Different protocols. So this is the... No. What? Uh, wrong slide. Oh, this here. One. Okay. Yeah. Ah, I got, I got you. Yeah. Uh, so good. I was just wondering. Yeah, good eyes. Is UN16 yeah, the, the, the no. default freedom? No, no it's... it's, it's uh, um, simplification on this slide. So basically on this slide, I didn't introduce the enum type. So this, this works, it just parses it so that in the end you have an UN16 value to work with. Um, in this one, um, if you look where opcode is being used, it's up here. Ah, okay. It's also being passed um, as in UN16, so that basically tells Spicy there are two bytes you need to pass. Yeah, push the type up the string. And then I push it up the string. Basically, I convert it over. I, I, I cast it over into the enum type. Mm -hmm. and, and then if, if, if this UN16 is a one, then the enum label that's being used is the read request. There's, there's a little thing. I can actually <laughs> talk about this. So basically, it could happen that, that you pass a value here for which we don't have an enum value. So what if, if there's a six being passed? Right? It was untrusted data. There could be a six coming there. Uh, spicy deals with that. Basically, spicy then still stores the numerical value internally, and you get an undef label instead. But you have still access to that six, so that you can can work with it. So it won't won't generate pass error. Okay, thank you. Uh, Zeek seems like a pretty powerful language, so you probably could uh, uh, get an infinite loop, uh, but in, um, instead of. <laughs> Uh, and then you can get the problem that instead of uh, getting a buffer of flow, you get an, a Zeek program that uh, runs indefinitely. Is, is there some defenses against that? And uh -huh. against that sort of uh, uh, thing yep. to happen? Good question. Yes. So, I mean, first answer yes, you can get into loops. Second answer is Vern, when he in 1995 designed the language, he actually tried to not make it easy to get into a loop. <laughs> there was no while statement. And, and basically, there was no way to create an unbounded loop in the language. Through recursion, you could still do it. So there's no real protection against it. And if you do it, you have a problem. And in a separate question, the, the features that you, you mentioned about uh, the parser of our, about Seek looks a lot like a monadic parser. Is, is it a little bit based on that? It's not. Based on that, I would say, but it's, it's, it, I, I agree that it shares some similarities. I, I think it comes from this declar declarative structure, right, where you express more like the form of what you want to pass rather than the way to pass it. And I think that, that, that kind of leads to the similarities. Yeah. Might be a dumb question, but did you consider use P4 as a description language? Yeah. So P4 came out a little bit later until we started this. But however, P4 is uh, much more low level. And, and um, you can't express, I, I'm not a P4 expert, but I, as far as I know, you can't really express a bunch of the things that, that we can express in spicy in P4. Um, there, there's generally been kind of a thinking if you can quote, compile spicy down further into something that's, that's not C++, but something that's more direct. Uh, useful for networking and uh, network analysis, and actually P4. Somebody, I think, suggested P4 once. I don't know if that uh, answers the question. Is there a performance effect, or is there not because you are compiling? Uh, so um, it's 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 a complex topic, but the but the short summary is the performance of the spicy parsers are about the same as the manually written ones. It, it depends a bit on, on all kinds of things, as always. But, but roughly speaking, no. So basically, this is this, the, the spicy parsers are fast enough to get them into a production seek and replace existing protocol parsers. And the thing is, it's, it's C++ in the end. Right? So, so you get, and then with that, you get all the optimization and everything the compiler can do. And, and it's some degree, it's, it's as if it were handwritten. Is the language open enough to parse uh, multiplex protocols like Quick? Uh, yes. So I, I would be very interested in find, finding cases that Spicy can't pass. Okay. So so, we have, so far we have not found one. Okay. And, and Quick, I, uh, Quick is on somebody's list, I think. So yeah. Quick should work. Great. Yeah. Yeah. So you have pretty complex state management capabilities and, 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 and stuff, so it should work.
All right, thank you very much.